California's green and golden foothills, home to the Sierra Railroad and many other railroads, a beautiful area to model, very popular. Dave Biondi's modeled the Sierra Railroad. So let's take a few minutes and let's visit Dave Biondi's layout and just sit back and we'll watch the trains roll. So let's join Dave now as he shows us how to paint these beautiful California golden foothills. What I have on the table are the paints that I will be using today for the demonstration. Um, the first color is Payne's Gray and it's a color that I use to darken colors. The next color is a chromium oxide green. This color I use for painting grasses and some trees. This color is a yellow-orange, and I use yellow-orange along with yellow and white to make real light sun-lit colors. Um, the next color is a yellow okri, and I use this for a dry grass color. This is titanium white, and I use it along with gesso to lighten colors. This color is chromium oxide, or hooker green. Hooker green is a color that I use for painting tree, uh, pine trees, conifer trees, uh, and some bushes. Uh, the two browns that we're going to use today are raw umber and burnt sienna. And then along with that I have a little bit of white gesso. So the gesso is mixed with the sky blue latex paint that I make and I use that as a mist color for my sky. And the other 
tool that I use is a little water spritzer which helps me to keep the paint wet on my palette or if I need to moisten the, um, the backdrop I will spray this on the backdrop also. And then I have two buckets of water. One bucket of water has soap in it and I use that to clean the brushes. And I have another bucket of water with just a little bit of soap in it that I use to just do an initial cleaning of the, book, of the brushes. And then I have a uh, small palette which I bought at uh, Michael's. It was $10 for a plastic palette and it's very good to work with. The first step in, in painting your backdrop is to paint a sky blue color on your on your backdrop material. Um, what I like to do is, is pencil out where the scene is going to be on the backdrop and paint that area blue above and leave the area below it white or paint it white with a white latex or a white gesso paint. Um, and I did this previously. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use the mist color I told you about which is a mixture of about 50% of the blue sky paint that I have and 50% white gesso. And I'm just going to start below the sky with this color and I'm going to just start working that color up. And what I like to do is make it just a California mist or a foothills mist that just hangs kind of low in the sky and is not very distinctive. And I'm using just a 29 cent one inch brush that I bought from Ace Hardware to do this with. And I'm putting the wet I'm putting the paint on the brush and I'm spreading it below and then working that up into the sky and as the brush dries out it leaves just a very very light mist effect on the on the backdrop. should do it. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to start what I call the underpainting on the hill and we're going to use two colors to do this today. The first color that we're going to use is raw umber and the raw umber is going to go on the shade side of the hill. The shade side of the hill will be the right side of each one of these hills that I have here and then down in this lower area which is a forward hill we're going to use burnt sienna and I'm using just a crumpled up crumpled up piece of paper towel to do this with Now, do you wet your surface beforehand, or uh, you just just do this on dry? No, Daryl, I'm putting this on dry. It just goes dry right onto the material, and the reason why you don't want it wet is because you don't want it to run or cover too heavily. You just want it to spread a darker color onto the canvas and that, or onto the backdrop in that area. The second color that we're going to use and it's going to be on the forward hill is burnt sienna. Burnt sienna is a little bit redder and as a result of that when you see it on the on the backdrop it'll give the appearance of being 
closer. Getting a clean place on my paper towel, getting a little bit of the burnt sienna on there, and I'm just going to rub it on here. And I like the way that rubbed on, that rubbed on real nice. The next thing we need to do is we need to set up our palette with the colors that we're going to be using on our backdrop. And the colors that I'm going to be using for these background hills back here, here and here, is going to be the chromium oxide green and the raw umber. We'll paint that on first. And then after we paint that on, we're going to mix some chromium oxide green with that and paint it on the light side of the hills here. And then we're going to use some of the yellow okra and we're going to highlight those hills with that color. And you'll see that in the demonstration. So our next step now is to start doing the base coloring of the hills. We're going to start with the raw umber and a little bit of chromium oxide green. We're going to mix them together on the palette to get a brownish green color, kind of a olive green, which we want to take a little bit lighter. And I'm doing that with a little bit of white gesso. So we have a nice light color. I'm going to put a little bit more white gesso on here because every time you think you have it the color that you would like it to be and you put it on your backdrop you discover that it's darker than you want it. And I'm going to start working this color over the top of this area that we've previously done already. And I'm putting it on in such a way that the brown color, which we had painted earlier, will show through. And I'm using my mister to keep this paint wet. looks like you're really scrubbing the paint in there. I'm just really spreading a light undercoat of this green onto the, um, the painting. And I'm going to go all the way over here and do, the, and do the same thing because I just want to get a light, a light color green on all of this. And it also helps you use up the paint on the brush. Is there a particular brush you're using there? Is it just uh... well? This is one of the uh, flat brushes. This is a num this is a number twelve flat that we purchased this morning in that packet of, uh, mm -hmm. of paint brushes that I I showed you. I'm going to let those colors set up and dry for a moment before we move on to the next colors. And if you'll notice, when you look at this now, 
you start to see a darker area green here and a lighter area green here. Same holds true on this hill, same holds true on this hill. But what we're starting to do is starting to create dimensions on this hill by giving it form and shape. Now the next step we're going to do is we're going to take that green that we use on these hills and we're going to start working a yellow color into it. This is the yellow okra and this green and yellow will start giving the illusion of light on those hills and we don't want to put too much in because we don't want the hills to get too light. So we're going to start with some of the green on the palette. And I'm going to wet this color. That's better. And then I'm going to add some of the yellow to it. And then after some of the yellow, we're going to add a little bit of the white. And for me, this color is still too green. So I'm going to come back and I'm going to add more yellow to it. And when I have a shape, a color that is a nice yellow green, then I'll start scrubbing this color onto the backdrop, which I'm happy with this color. It maybe needs to be a little bit lighter. So we'll touch a little bit more white into it. And then I think we're ready to go with that color. color looks very green going on, but it's basically another layer or undercoat on what we're doing, and you need not despair about how, how bright it is. Try not to have these hills be real smooth. Try to have or paint a little bit of irregularity into them so they don't look like, I don't know, maybe cones. And if your line is a little bit fuzzy here, that'll help you. It'll make it start looking like trees. Now I'm going to take a little bit of brown and mix it into this green. And we're going to start putting some definition into this hillside right in here. Coming up to the other hill, which will be painted later. And I'm going to use that same color over here.
Now what happens is, as we work this, the hills that are in the background will need to remain a lighter color and the hills that come forward will, will become brighter and I'll show you that as we paint this. The way we make the foreground hill brighter is by painting it with the pure color of the green. And we're going to take this color all the way through down here to where your layout line is. to do now is come back along here and do some repair work because I see a couple of areas that are a little bit lighter than I would like them to be. Like right here and right in through here and there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this chrome green that we used with a little bit of the brown and I'm going to make it a little bit darker shade than it was before. And I'm going to going to scrub this color in here. Here we go. This is the way I want it, right? Like this. Yeah, that looks very good. That gives you nice shadow area there in your hills. into this area and here you'll notice that I'm just kind of gently painting that in and darkening that area so that I have the color the way I want it and I think that looks fine it's a little bit darker brown than green on the top of the hill and that's what we're working towards and we're going to do the same thing right in here to this so that I could make it just a little bit wetter so it will just spread on this a little bit easier. And I have a hair here which I want to take out it's from the brush. And we'll just come back over that and we'll repair that right now. I'm not too worried about this area where my brush is right now because this is going to have trees in it as there's going to be trees along this line here and along this line here. Everywhere along here on these lines and somewhere in other areas too there will be trees. Now I'm going to take this brush that we're working with on these hills and I'm going to start putting a little bit of yellow on the opposite side of these hills to start highlighting it with that green. Keeping in mind that we don't want it to get real yellow but we do want it to have a brighter yellow green appearance and I'm going to add a little bit of white to it because I want to push those hills back just a little bit.
you'll notice that as I do that, that this now starts to look a brighter yellow, uh, yellow green. I'm going to add just a little bit more green to that. Now we're going to move over and we're going to do this hill. And we're going to do the same thing with this hill that we just did on the other hill. I'm going to add yellow. Just a touch of green to it. I have too much green there. We're going to add more yellow to it. More yellow. And you keep building that color until you're happy with it. Don't try to mix that to the right consistency on your backdrop because it won't work for you. You'll be very unhappy with the end result. Now I'm going to wipe some of the paint off the brush. And after wiping the paint off the brush, I'm then going to come back over and start painting this hilltop again. And you notice I'm just using a little scrubbing motion and I'm just working that paint into the top of that hill and pulling it down into the hill itself. Kind of the opposite technique that we used on the sky where we worked the color up, now we're working the color down. But we have a nice yellow green color right in through here and we have a nice yellow green in through here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to work this side of this hill. And because Well, because this hill is actually supposed to be more forward than this hill, um, it's going to be brighter. So we need to change this, and we'll just change it by bringing some of this brown down here, some of the green, a little bit more of the brown, and we're going to make this correction. contrast darker than the lightness in the hill here. And what's going to happen here is that's going to become distant trees. So we don't need to worry about that. And I'm softening that brown just a little bit because it looked a little bit too heavy to me. And I'm happy with this combination now. I think these are nice looking hills for background hills and we just need to we just need to work this green in here just a little bit. There we go. Now the next hill that we're going to work on is going to be this hill and we're going to work on the on the light side of the hill. So keeping in mind that we're going to be working the yellow green into this, we want to do two things. We want to, number one, give it the lightness of color that we want. And then number two, we want to use the light color to give shape to the hill. So let's start right here. And we'll pull the shape of the hill down like this. And then we're going to start pulling the hill back this way, too. And what this will do is it'll start giving more form to this hill. It'll make the hill look as though not only is it going up and down this way, but rolling towards you also.
And if you look at the hill now, you can see that there's parts of the hills here that appear to be farther forward than areas back here on the hill. Now we're going to brighten this just a little bit with some more of the uh, some more of the yellow. And I think it would be a good idea just to leave that hill alone. Now that we have our, our back three hills painted, what I've noticed is that this hill and this hill need to be pushed back just a little bit. So I'm going to take just some white gesso, which I'm rubbing onto the brush right now, and then rubbing off the brush at the same time. And I'm just going to start lightly working the white gesso into the top of the hills. And my reason for doing that is to push the hills back into the distance a little bit. Not a lot. And that's probably enough right there. I'm going to do just a little bit more here because the trees will come up to that point. And we're just going to fade that in down to here, like so. And that really softens that hill. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm softening that hill a little bit more too. So I'm happy with that now. I think those back hills are fine. I think they're done. Probably the smart thing to do is to leave them alone because there's an old saying when you're painting and that is if you fuss with it too much you're going to mess it up. We're going to have trees in through here and a structure. So I'm going to leave this area the way it is right, right for the time being after I do one little one little thing here. There we go. Just getting a little bit more green on that as an under undercoating. So what I want to do now, I want to switch gears completely and stop painting the hills and start painting some of these tree lines in here so that you can see them. I'm cleaning out the brush that I was using. That was the, um, on this particular case, it was the uh, number eight flat, which is one of the new brushes. A very nice brush. And I'm going to pick up the number six round. Along with the number six round in that packet is a number two round. So there's probably an in-between brush in there that I'm not seeing, but that's okay because I don't think we need it. So for these distant hills on these trees, what we're going to use is the same green paint that we were using for the hill color itself. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to add to it just a little bit of Payne's Gray because I want to darken the green just a little bit. as you're working you'll notice that the paint runs down your palette and that is what gets all over your shirt when you're painting your backdrops. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some of this green and I'm going to put it down here. I'm going to put just a touch of Payne's Gray into it just to darken it. Once I have that color darkened to an area that I like, because it's a background tree I might add just a little bit of white to that to add distance to it. And I think that will be satisfactory. And you'll notice that what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the trees on the back side of the hill because there would be more moisture on this side of the hill versus on this side of the hill which would be drier. That's the way the hills usually are here in, in California. 
I'm going to start with getting a hair out of the brush and just start making a few little trees right up in this area. Now you notice I'm just putting a couple of little short dabs with the brush just to get some green up there on the hill. You don't have to worry about shape necessarily when you're doing this. It's just it's just doing it so that you get the illusion of a tree form. That's all we want is just to, to have that illusion. And this actually can go very fast when you're doing it. If you notice I've already got several trees on that hill. And it was just a series of fast, short, jabbing steps with this brush. And now we're going to put several more in. And I think what we'll do is we'll put one or two just rearing their heads up over the top of the hill, right in here, like that. And that's probably enough. Leave it alone right there. You'll be happy with it. Going to add some more of that gray to the green. And I'm going to come down here and paint over this area right here. That's all we're going to do on that. That's all you need to do. Now we're going to walk over to this other hill and do basically the same thing. I'm going to take the green, move it down here, take some of the gray, move it down here, take a little bit of the white to lighten it. Once you have the brush loaded with that, you wipe it off a little bit. And we're going to come right down into this canyon here. and start painting that. Liking the way that looks, it's more irregular. I'm going to do the same thing here and change that just a little bit. There you already have some nice hills, some nice trees. And we're going to come over here and add a few up and through here. And maybe come around the front of the tree or the hill right up in this area here. One of the tricks that you can use when you're painting hill or trees on a hill where there's already the hillside and you don't want to get your paint on the on the hillside is just use a piece of paper and make a few dabs like so uh, just like so and here's a little blemish that we can cover up with a tree and we'll come down here and Put a little tree down in that corner right there. Like that. And there you are. Now I think what I'm also going to do is work a few trees back and forth in this area here. Because I don't want the... I don't want the... Uh, I don't want the hills to be too uniform. We'll just let that dry. 
Now I've added to my palette Hooker's Green. Hooker's Green is a darker green and I use this for making foreground trees so that they'll stand out more vividly in front of the background trees we have here. Um, let me go ahead and show you how we're going to do some of this. Now you added Payne's Gray to that? Is I've that? added Payne's Gray to this because what I want to do is just darken this green a little bit. Um, by darkening it and then coming back over it again with the hooker's green and maybe a little bit of yellow or the hooker's green and a little bit of white, it allows me to create a, uh, a nice highlight on the tree, which will add dimension to the tree. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple of trees, different shape than this, that look more like uh, a fir tree or a cypress tree or an Italian cypress or something like that, which we'll, you'll see in the, in the wine country. And we're going to add a few of them right in through here. And what I'm doing is putting the paint on the brush in such a way that it, it forms a chisel point. And then I'm just working that chisel point onto the canvas. Yeah. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to come to the other side of the hill and we're going to add two or three trees over here, not as many. And we'll just leave it just like that. That looks fine. I'm just rinsing out my brush because I'm going to switch brushes now to a round. I'm going to come back with my round brush. In this case, it's a, uh, a number six. I'm going to use the same color with some of the gray in it. Now this is your hooker's green. This is the hooker's green, yeah, the hooker's green, because we're using a brighter green here now on the foreground trees. And what we're going to do is we're going to come right down here and add this on this slope of this hill here. And that really is going to make two things happen. The first thing that happens is that this application of green in front of the other green pushes those hills back. And the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to use this green to work tree shapes around the front side of this hill and it'll actually add dimension to this hill. Now you don't need to put a lot of them in. You certainly don't want to fill up the fill up the, the hill because most of the hills in California are not loaded with trees. But they need to be fairly dark and distinctive like that. And that's probably good enough. Let's put a couple up in here because I think they'll be an attractive addition to the uh, to the hillside. And because they're further up the hill, I'm not going to make them quite as big. for a couple of nice looking trees there on that hill. Now what we do need to do is work a couple of trees into the hillside down here. Because what we want to do is we want to continue that illusion of trees in front of trees. I'm not going to put a lot of trees in. I'm just going to put a few in. But just by doing that, we're adding 
some layers to the trees, which is what you want to do. Now looking at this, when I come back, I'm looking here and I'm thinking that a nice thing to do right through here and maybe right here would be to add some more yellow and make that pop out in front of those trees. So what we're going to do is we're going to let that green dry that we have and we're going to come back over that later with a little bit of yellow. We may brighten up a few spots up in here, there, and maybe right in here. But that will help give some real dimension to those trees. Let's start working a tree line right through here. And we can work some trees up into this area here, and we can work some trees in this area. And we're going to use the same dark, the same dark green that we were using before, the hooker's green with the panes gray in it. Notice that what I'm doing is I'm making these a little bit bigger because these trees are coming forward now. And at the same time, I'm going to add some of that nice dark green over in this area. If we look at it now, once again, we have trees that are in front of other trees. The brown dimension contrasts nicely with the green in here. The yellow and the green contrast nicely. So we have a lot of nice colors working in there for us. I'm going to add more trees to this hillside over here. All I'm using here with this brush is just a dabbing motion to put this green on. I like these irregular shapes like this because it makes it look like there's little meadows of grass or vineyards or whatever it might possibly be in those areas. So we'll just leave them there. going to do is we're going to come back later and have some fun highlighting them. Now every once in a while you want to close that off and when you close it off it makes it look like the brush is denser and the, the hillside is uh, more heavily wooded with trees. And basically what's happening now is that this first hillside right in through here is complete. We can almost leave that one alone and just be happy with it. And notice that we have nice things going on between the lights and the darks and the grass is showing through on the hillside with the trees. I'm going to let that dry and after that dries we're going to come back and highlight it lightly. Not heavily, just lightly. Now we're going to do virtually the same thing on this hillside right in here.
I notice I keep a lot of what I call negative space in these things. Is you don't want all your trees to be the same height. If they are, then they don't look right. But if you let them run in kind of a, a sawtooth or a regular shape like that or pattern, it makes it look more natural, for one, and it just breaks up any any illusion of straightness. Like unless you're trying to do something like paint rows of uh, wine grapes. Still working with the same two colors. Same two colors. And what I'm doing right now is I'm coming inside here and I'm just adding a little bit because I want to kill that little valley that was down in there. It just looked like there was a little flat area and now that I've painted that over it, it appears to be gone. Okay, so the next thing we're going to have to address is going to be this space right in through here. And then we need to color this area in just a little bit. If you look here, we have this, which was well, just a natural thing that happened with painting, but that starts to look like a little trail coming down the hill. It's funny how these things sort of develop just as you're painting and you have no real knowledge that you've done that. Going back to the to the chrome green that I used before, with a little bit of the brown in it, and I may have to refresh the brown because there's just not enough of it to to make the tone that I want. Now the brown you were using there was what color? This again? was the uh, the raw umber. Yeah, we're going to put a little bit more brown back on the brush. Well, not on the brush, but on the palette. There we go. Come right here with it. Get some of the green. Add that right in there. Like that. That's a little bit darker, but I think it'll be okay. Now I'm going to add some more green. I don't want it to be too dark. I'm going to add just a touch of white to it to lighten it. Remembering that it always will turn out a little darker than you want it. But one of the things that we're going to do now is we're just going to generally take a look at this and see if there's any corrections that we need to make. And as I look this over, I see that these hills right here, or these trees right here on this hill, appear to be just a little bit darker than these foreground trees. And as a result of that, we need to just soften those a little bit so that they look like they're further back than these trees here. The way we'll do that is by taking some of that chromium oxide green that we started working with initially, we'll put it on the, on the palette here, going to take just a little bit of white on this small brush. This is another one of the flat brushes, but this is a number two now the, of the uh, brush collection that we bought this morning. And then we're going to come along and just lighten these trees until, until we're happy with them. or I should say until I'm happy with them. 
because when I looked at them and I saw that they were a little bit darker, I wasn't happy with that. And that's the sort of critical eye you have to develop when you're when you're doing your backdrop so that you have the proper color regression going on. Adding a little bit of white to this again to freshen it up. And then I'm going to come back and just lightly touch these again. I'm happy with them. And I'm happy with that because now these trees look like they're further back from, from these and it just adds that layer of dimension to it. I don't think we need to touch anything over here. I think this area is fine. As we look over the, the, the painting, everything seems to be proper in terms of depth and dimension. So the next thing I want to do is I want to add a couple of trees right in this area right here. And those trees are going to be a little bit a little bit back yet because they're not large like these trees. But what they're going to do is they're going to assist us right in this area here to bring that part of the hill forward. green. Okay. And I'm pushing the bristles into the brush here to make them fan out just a little bit because I want them to have a nice flare to them as we put these hills or these trees on this hill. And I don't think we need more than three of them. I think three will do the job just very nicely. Okay. Now what we need to do is start coming along and just lightly highlighting some of these to push them back a little bit, as with this one right here these look a little bit brighter and these look a little darker so they need to be pushed back just a little bit and what we're going to the way we're going to do that is by using the chromium oxide green and what the chromium oxide green does is it just helps to start creating a little bit of a highlight and to that we're going to add the hookers green but this will not be as dark as these other foreground trees. So let's go ahead and, and do that. And you'll see how these trees widen up. And that will help push them back just a little bit. It'll soften them. Next thing we need to do is we start to need we need to start building this area in here. And this area in here is going to be more of this type of tree with the vertical brush strokes. And as we come down this way, we're going to work some lighter trees in here. 
So you'll have a contrast between lights and darks as they play back and forth. So let's get the other brush. Which is right here. And using the hooker's green and doing the chisel point. Now I'm going to leave this fairly bright because this is more of a foreground. These are more foreground trees. Yeah. And If you have trouble with your paint drying, it's a good idea to use your, your little spritzer to help keep it wet. And what I'm going to do is keep this area here unpainted because I want to put the building in there. And I'm going to use the spritzer again just to wet in that paint. I like that paint to just kind of flow off the brush. I don't like to have to fight it a lot. There you go. I think we can leave that right there. Now I'm going to create a contrasting tree, a tree that will be lighter in the foreground. And I'm going to use the chromium oxide green. And I'm also going to shape that like a deciduous tree, just so that it has a nice, a nice contrast in terms of shape. And that's enough color right there just to do that right at the time being. When we come over and highlight that, you'll see the difference that that makes. Took a break to get a glass of water. And while standing back looking at the backdrop, I realized that this area in here is falling down too steeply. And I need to change this, adjust these trees so they come out this way more. And then we'll come back and we're going to do just some basic highlighting in these areas and then the back hills will be finished. What we do now is we're going to come along here and just fill in behind here with some more trees. And the reason why I'm doing that was to change the drop of that hill. By doing this we've raised now the hill up and it, it's, it's not dropping off as rapidly. At least it should have that appearance. Everything else in here I think looks pretty good. We do have a pretty rapid fall off here and I guess I might as well change that right now while I'm sitting here with the paint. Well that shows you how easy corrections can be made. Okay, so the other thing that I'm going to want to do then is I'm going to want to come along and just highlight some of these spots on the hills so that you get a play of light and, and, and darks on the hills. A nice small brush for that would be just, is just fine. <clears throat> end up everywhere. Adding a little bit of white up here to the corner of the palette. To that I'm going to add a little bit of this yellow until I'm happy with the color that I have. And because it always dries a little bit darker, I'm going to put just another little touch of white in it. And that will lighten it up very, very nicely. Give us a nice look of sunlight across the top of the sill. And I'm going to wipe a lot of the paint off of the brush so that when I touch this 
it just puts a little bit of it on, not a lot. Just like that, enough to push it back. I'm going to do the same thing. Now what happened there was I forgot to wipe the brush off. I got a little bit more paint on that than I wanted, so I used my finger to spread it around. And your finger is a nice tool to use when you're doing this because it helps blend stuff in like that. As you can see now that hilltop, especially this hilltop, pops out real nicely here. And this one here is okay. I'm not unhappy with it, but I'm going to do it just a little bit more because sometimes I can't leave things alone. And I'm going to blend that with my finger too. Like that. And I think both those hilltops look real nice now. So now we have to start working this area right here to brighten it. We don't want to do it a lot, but we want to do it a little. We don't want to add too much light color to it because it'll push it back. But these hills are fairly light and therefore you're going to need some here too. Is this again using the same mix of colors? Yes, it's the same mix of colors. It's the yellow okri and the white. Ochre. Ochre. <laughs> I'm laughing because I have a hard time with that word. I think in my whole life I've probably pronounced it correct once. Notice how that just pops it out and it's just putting a little bit of it on. It'll do the job and then you blend it in. See how nicely that looked? Yeah. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come along and if you notice what happened here, I accidentally hit the yellow paint into the green and I contaminated that color so we can't use that color anymore. So the thing to do is just to wipe it off. So now we've got that area cleaned up and we're using the the white and the yellow again. And I'm taking a little bit of that into there and mixing that color. I'm wiping it off and I think I'm happy with what I see in here. We can add just a touch of it right along this edge here. I'm going to make sure it's nice. And then we're going to wipe it out like that. Just to highlight that a little bit. And I think that works out very nicely. Let's put another little touch right in here. And I'm going to add just a little bit more yellow to it. There we go. There we go. That makes it very nice. Okay, same thing here. We need to add a little bit of sunlight to this hill, so we're going to do that right now. That brightens that hill. Same thing here on this side. Let me step back a little bit. That'll brighten that up. And I think that we can almost leave alone. 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to come back and we're going to do a light highlight on these trees and then we're, we're going to play with that one. Now these trees previously were the hooker's green and the gray. But what we're going to do is we're going to stay with the hooker's green. And we can highlight them one of two ways. We can either add white to the color just to lighten the green. Or we could add yellow to the color. And adding yellow to the color will add a little, little appearance of sunlight to it. So let's add just a little bit of yellow to it. And that will brighten those up just a little bit. And just generally change, lightly change the appearance of those trees. And by dabbing and not covering all of those spots, paint's a little bit dry. By dabbing, what we do is we create the shadow and the highlight that makes up the body of the tree. And that also will help to just soften those trees just a hair. And add just a touch of white to it on the other side here. And I want to flare that brush out if I can by crushing it up against the palette. And then we come back and we just touch it like that. And what we've done is we've added some very, very light detail to the tree by doing that. You don't want a lot of detail on these distant trees. You just want to have that illusion that something's going on there. Kind of like that. The sunlight is hitting most things from this side. So what we want to do, is, if you want to do more, you can add just a little bit more yellow to your brush. Mix it in with your green. And on these lower trees, just lightly hit it to green almost. I mean to yellow almost. You want to just lightly hit it with some of this color. And you'll see how that will pop out the trees and give them a little bit more body. And I'm probably not going to do too much too much more. And I think that's I'm happy with that. You can see how the trees just start to look like they have some dimension. But we will come down here and do the same thing on this side with these. Because it's important to have that illusion of some dimension in your trees. The other thing it doesn't hurt to do is to take your brush and now here it's the chrome green again and just lightly put in little splotches of paint like this because what that'll do is that'll make it look like there is some variation in the hillside. and everything won't be uniform and flat. And that's the type of variation you'd see it on the closer hills, but you wouldn't really notice it on the far distant that's hills. That's true. Yeah. And even this is fine. I think I would just leave that alone. Yeah, I, I'm perfectly happy with that. Okay.
So now we're going to work this area here. I'm going to start by, by darkening up these trees in the foreground and this area and through here. Um, and then we're going to work the forward hill. Now you notice that what I'm doing is letting some of the light color come through. And that will give the illusion of ground or other activity that's going on behind there. It could be, it could be anything. Uh, we don't have to distinguish what that is. But it, it's just nice to leave little light areas like that in, uh, in your backdrop. People's minds will see that and they'll make something out of it. Now I'm going to come along with the chromium oxide green and I'm going to highlight some of these forward trees that we've done in here. And that's probably enough right there just to give them some some life and this probably had enough time to dry a little bit so I'm going to highlight it. So it is important to let these things dry before you go back over. Well it truly is important to yeah. do that yeah. yeah because if you don't the, the colors will blend and if the colors blend then you're not going to be real happy with them. So while people may not see that you're actually doing that on the video since mm -hmm. it's so short, uh, what is happening as you get to a certain stage, you do step back and let it dry completely before working with the next. That's a good idea. And, we, yes. we, and you decided not to put that structure in there we talked about earlier. Right. But just really concentrate on doing the, just the, the, the mountains and the trees yeah, and the bushes. I, I uh, you think know, I that. think it worked better, I think. Okay. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to pick up the bristle brush again and because I'm kind of changing things a little bit, I'm going to change the, the coloration that I have right along this edge because I want it to be lighter. So I'm taking my brush and in this case I'm adding just a little bit of white to it, probably too much white. I'm wiping it off and I'm going to bring it out to a chisel point again. Now as you're doing that you're just dabbing the paint on there and making uh, almost a uniform area of lighter color but you're not really just boldly going over it and right. doing uh, it a different way. Actually what I'm doing is I'm doing it in such a way that the light will show variations of color in here. The variations are what give the illusion of lighter and darker bushes and trees and stuff like that. And that Always have to keep this paint wet. If it gets dry, it doesn't it doesn't work as nicely as you would like it to. There we go. There we go. Okay. So now we're going to play more boldly with these foreground hills or this foreground hill here. Um, what I want on this particular hill is I want it to be lighter than these hills because it's forward and what I did was I painted this um, under color here for the trees but now we're going to start working this out and as we work this I'm probably going to change this hill side over here because I don't like the steepness of it. Um, you know, we're just going to smooth the whole thing out and, if, and as I'm smoothing it out if I cover up most of these trees it doesn't matter because it will just make the trees look like they're behind it. So. I'm going to start with a darker color, the uh, 
the raw umber that we used before. And I'm going to mix this here. And to it I'm going to add some of the chromium oxide green. But in this case, because it's forward now, I'm going to brighten it with just a little bit of yellow. Like that. And we're going to start working this end in here. So it's easy actually to change these hillsides if you're not happy with what you're doing by simply lightly adding color over the top and start building again. If you go too heavy then you're going to be in trouble and you're not going to be probably happy with your result. What will happen is as we build this color down and look at it we'll be covering up some of the error the error that we have there to that I'm going to add just a little bit of the red because the red is what's going to make this look like a foreground color. And we we'll probably need to just let it dry just a little bit more. I thought we had it but it's not quite right. What I've, what I've done now is I've taken some of the brown, the raw umber, I've mixed a little bit of the red, which is the burnt sienna, and I added just a touch of white to it. And I'm going to use this to work this forward area in here. And what that will start to do is it'll start putting a reddish tone into this hill, which will make this hill stand out forward from the back hill. What I'm going to do is lighten this color and start bringing it around the hill this way. Because what I'm trying to do is start to create dimension to this hill. switching gears again because as I come along here um, we have to start adding yellow to this side of the hill and I'm using the yellow ochre and I'm adding some white to it to lighten it and I'm going to add a little bit of green to it and I'm pretty happy with that color I think that color is going to be okay. This is where I add just a little bit more white because things always dry darker than they are. And it worked out just perfectly, I think. Here and work this area. We're going to hide. We're going to finish this right in through here. Well, I'm going to add more white to it. And I'm going to come right up into this here where I put that green. And I'm going to fade it right over the top of that green.
Now what happens is the brighter this hill gets, the more it stands out against these background hills. So we want to be careful. We don't want to get it to be too bright because it'll look it'll look false if we do. And now I'm going to start working the yellow and the chrome green together and start blending these colors up like this. And that's the same blending that we've done with the with the sky or or, or anything else that we've really done on this painting. Now I'm making the base a little bit darker. See how I've scrubbed the paint off of that? It wasn't quite ready for me to do that, so we're going to leave that alone. I'm going to add just a little bit more of the chrome grain to my palette. Because the important thing that's going to go on here is that we're going to, we're going to need a play in this area between the browns and the greens. And I may even change my brush. Sometimes going to a rounded brush for this type of scrubbing work is a good idea. Because it, uh, it's pointed and the, the pointed area will allow other colors to blend through or to fade through and not just solidly paint a color. Okay, now the colors again that you blended together here are your uh, chromium oxide. The, yeah, the yellow. Uh huh. The, oak, the ochre yellow. Uh huh. I'm smiling now because I <laughs> think I'm getting ochre correct. Saying ochre correct. Yeah. See how the darker green will start looking like shadow of the lighter green as we come along. So, now what we're going to do is go for a stiffer brush so that we can really scrub that. And I'm probably going to go back to this one. That's pretty stiff. Maybe I'll try that one. And what I did was I picked up one of the, uh, they call it a shader, and it was in that kit, and I'm just using it because it's there. Putting the yellow into it, putting more yellow into it, wiping off the paint as best I can, and we're going to start here. And start scrubbing some of this into it. And we're not going to cover all of that brown. We don't want to cover all of it. something like this I see where I can pull the yellow down into it more and that'll add to that illusion of dimension. So what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of yellow to this color here and see if I can work that color up. So you're working back and forth between the darker green and the lighter green with this color to, I'm working just back to and blend forth them together. To, to yeah. blend them together, yeah. And that's all we're doing right at the second. And basically what's happening is we've created a line here and now we have to kill the line.
So slowly that's starting to work and evolve into a smooth, into a smoother hill. Well, I'm going to pull this up here now. I'm not happy with that. I'm going to pull a little bit more of the yellow up here. I'm going to add a touch of white to it. And then we're going to give it one more touch of white just to play it safe. And we've started highlighting down the front side of the hill now. Now I'm going to pick up a little bit of the darker color. Right in here. And by doing that we've created an indentation in the ground. Clean the brush. Come back and get the lighter color. With a touch of white, another touch of white. Wipe it off a little bit, and we're going to come right back. No, nope. see that's too light now. Mm -hmm. Actually, one time where it became too light, but that's okay. We can work with it. We're going to use that, nonetheless, right in through here. We'll even pull the lightness up into that. Now we're going to come back again with the, the yellow. We'll darken that a little bit. And we'll come right back into the middle of that. Scrub some of that out. And this hill now is real bright and we need to do a little bit of blending here and we need to do a little bit of work coming out this way. We've gone ahead and blended that in, and the only thing we need to do is work this area here. So I'm going to switch to a larger brush. I'm going to go to back to my flat brush because I really tend to use my flats a lot. I'm going to pick up the green and mix it with some of the yellow. touch of white in it to lighten it. I'm going to add that down there because I don't want it to get too light. And I'll come up here and we're going to start right up in here now. And start working that color. And now what we want to do is we want to lighten it. So we add just to this color here, we'll take a little bit of this, put it right there, come right back over the top of this, right here. And we're going to do a little bit more of the yellow with it, right through here. And now we've got a green hill that we can see the we can see the ruts in it, and you can see other low areas. And now we just have to figure out how we're going to handle this connection right through here again.
And I think that probably softened it enough that that's probably good enough for that for that hillside. The only thing we have to do now is add some detail to it, some trees or bushes or whatever you want. Okay. Now what we're going to do is put a couple of foreground trees in right in this area. I always set those things down over there. We're going to put a couple of foreground trees in along this area and that will help push everything back that we've got here so far. So let's start off right now with the, with the hooker's green. We're going to put some of these trees right here in front of this area that we've painted already. Like right through here. We'll put another one. Need more paint. You notice I'm, I'm not painting any specific looking tree in these areas. All I'm doing is making a irregular shape which I will form into some resemblance of some sort of tree. And this works really good on your backdrops because when you put this at track level it makes a nice dark contrast to put things in front of. Like when you want to put your trees or your buildings, or whatever it is that you choose to put in there. This is, this is a great way to handle that space. And I noticed you don't make that row of trees even across the top, no. but there's a lot of variation in the height and the, the spacing of that. Very, very much so, yeah. Because these trees are really... Uh, these trees are really different for the whole backdrop because what they're going to do with what we're doing right now is they're going to form the underpainting again for the highlight color that we're going to put over that. Now we need to let that dry. So now what we're going to do is we're going to highlight these foreground trees that we put in. And we're going to highlight it in two applications. We're going to highlight it with a green and then we're going to highlight it with a yellow. And the yellow that we highlight these trees with will be brighter than the yellow that we've used on the backdrop because that brighter yellow will once again step these trees forward. As you'll see in just a minute. So, I'll make sure that we so this Stab is, the bristles of this brush out and fan them out. And this is the chromium oxide. This green. is the chromium oxide green that we're using, yeah. Because what we're doing is we're trying to create, and I'm not happy with the way that's working. It, it looks okay, but I'm. Let me work this brush just a little bit more. Okay, now I think I'm happier with it. But what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to work this brush back and forth and get areas of light and darkness with it as I do it. And that those areas of light and darkness create the shadow that's in behind these trees. See how that looks? That looks a little bit better than what I've done over in here. The brush just wasn't quite working right over there. But that looks better to me already. Now you get the brush to work right by 
stabbing by, it by in. By stabbing so, it and, and, and shaping it and forming so, it on so, the... So it, you're the really sort of ruining the brush by, right. by just splaying it if out you, so it works better. If you look at it, it kind of takes a half moon shape, if you can see it. I don't know if you can get in close enough to see that. But it gets a little crescent shape to the bristles. And what happens is the, the brush bristles get kind of a half round to it or a quarter round. And when you get that quarter round, then you can use that to do the highlighting on the trees. And it makes all the difference in the world. See what happens? Mm -hmm. If you look right in there, you see how nicely that, that creates that light and shadow. now it's working really nicely yeah. in yeah. through there. Very, very nicely. And I'm making a little little half round shape as I do that with the brush. I'm, I'm just going in a half round circle. See how those trees are taking shape? And there's not a garish or bold contrast between this green and the one no, underneath. So no. it's, it's a subtle difference. It's a so very subtle difference. It just brings yeah. out the shapes and the contours mm -hmm. of the trees themselves. And then you just continue into the foreground? Is that yeah, I'm just working that down to, to make that look like those trees go right on down to the ground. Okay. And what I'm going to do here, which is different than what we did above, is I'm going to take some yellow and I'm going to put it here, and the brush has already got some of that chromium oxide green on it. Let me put it back over here. I'm going to take some of this yellow, and that's way, way too much yellow, but that's okay. And we're going to mix a little bit of that chromium oxide green in with it. And then we're going to take a little touch of white, and we're going to add it here. And this is going to add the ultimate highlight to this foreground area. And we're going to use this real, real sparingly. And I always, because I'm left-handed, I always work from the left to right when okay. I'm doing something like this. If you're right-handed, you want to work from right to left. Because if you're working left to right, and you're working through a wet area, you're going to streak it. Okay, let's start right here. I want to make sure this is well formed. There we go. And I'm just ever so lightly going to touch this now. You don't have to put a lot of it on, but it is just enough to pop it out. to the dimension of the trees. And now I'm doing exactly what I said not to do, but because the brush is working better for me that direction.
And there we go. We'll leave it alone. Okay. And that point there, I think you've got a finished painting. Looks great. Backdrop. Great. What you can do is either darken this area up or mm -hmm. lighten it up to put grass in front of it or uh -huh. leave it alone and put your material there. So it would probably be better to go ahead and put your scenery in at this point. This would be and a good time. Uh, just to get the rough contours in, decide right. what kind of trees you actually want in front of that, mm -hmm. and then if you need to add detail, add the detail once you've got your foreground scenery already in place. That would be a good way to go. Okay, very yeah. good. Well, thank you, Dave. Well, I certainly appreciate it. it. Yeah, great. Okay.